I come all this way, that's what I get. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Loses. Well, not the second time. What am I, the U.S. Postal Service? Sir. Uh, I'm inferring we'll have a few more people come in. So, uh, what, you know, today is about a, uh, a taking uh, at least two sections on the time conditions and getting some uh, metric. Uh, but in advance of that, I really do just want it. I just don't, this really is what it's about. And um, the process of, of, of reasoning, the way logical reasoning is constructed, it's all right there. Every issue is solved here. If I want to, if I want to measure <clears throat> your ability to identify an assumption, I can place it here, I can place it here, I can place it here, and I can place it here. And, and it goes with every issue. Every single issue, if you understand, definitely if you just get the big picture, test is not that big a deal. Uh, and so I thought maybe like just try an example, which it occurred to me on the way here, just an example in everyday life. Uh, well, not everyday life, but an example that everybody will be aware of. And watch how people go in different directions, right? And how likely is it that the direction they went in is the direction that they just want to go in? Right. And so, would we agree? Is just watch what ha I mean. It's, it's just fascinating, right? Does everybody agree that uh, Speaker Pelosi did not send over uh, the? Bill of impeachment right away. Talk to me. Is everybody aware of that as an established fact? Yes. Yeah. Um, and that there was a delay of maybe a week to ten days. I don't know what. But but does everybody agree that's an established fact? Almost a yes. month. I'm sorry. It was almost a month. Well, there you go. So it was some period of time, which appeared again. There isn't much history to to impeachment, but it appears to be the case. It was unusual. Yeah. Okay. Especially so, when you tell everybody that it was a rush. Well, we're going to get well, that, and that's a fact. That is what it is a fact that in a prior communication, the speaker indicated that uh, we could that a delay was not a good thing because the president is just so damn dangerous, basically in the power. Is that fair? Yeah. So what I'm saying is, everyone is starting with the same established facts, right? Right. So I'm going to infer, my first inference here is I'm going to infer that the only person who really knew what motivated the speaker to do that was who? Her. Yeah, to talk to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so if, if we were looking at an established facts and, and Speaker Pelosi were complete and accurate, I think she would be the only person who would have the answer to that. Because even if she had shared it with someone, do we know that what she shared was truthful? No. Or complete? Or accurate? And I don't mean to suggest it wasn't, but do you get, we have to infer if she communicates with somebody else, it is all those things. Yes? Yeah. So like this to me is just so easy. So that's what we have. Now, is it fair to say the speaker could have multiple reasons, not just one reason, but multiple reasons for holding up that bill. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But don't we have to infer, if we're going to attribute to the speaker a motivation, doesn't that have to be inferred? <coughs> yeah, talk to me. Yeah. And, and therefore, can't we all be wrong? Yes. And if isn't it kind of like human nature that if you're on the Trump side of the equation, you're going, that's going to influence how you infer? I mean, you're going there because there, there are multiple possibilities over here. Like, why did you do it, right? And if you're on one side of the fence, you're likely to attribute that <coughs> to one set of causes, right? But if you're on the other side of the fence, but see how important this is. Let's say 
would, would everybody agree that, well, let me, let's say you are, just think about the implications of not reasoning and not being aware how you reason. Let's say you're a Bernie supporter. So for those who are watching this 20 years from now, that's Bernie Sanders, independent senator from Vermont. Yes? Yeah. Yes. So do we agree out there there are Bernie supporters? Yes. Yeah. And could a Bernie supporter infer from the speaker's conduct that the speaker's conduct was intended to disadvantage Senator Sanders? Yes. And more specifically, that could be accomplished because doesn't the delay now keep Senator Sanders in the Senate six days a week? Yes. And isn't it two weeks before the first primary? Yes. And isn't it three weeks before the second primary? Yes. Talk to me. Yes. So do you see how, now again, these are not my inferences, <coughs> right? Could you see that someone who supports Senator Sanders is inferring that these motives are malignant. Yes. yes. Yeah. And could that person be right? Yes. yes they could, be. could the person be wrong? Yes. <laughs> you know, you know saying, and, and the only person who really knows is the speaker, right? So do you now see, once that's inferred, right? I mean, I love this stuff. Because once that's inferred, this column now contracts. Because that person believes they've discovered a fact. You with me? So in that person's mind, it is no longer undiscovered. Right. Right? That person is now discovered through inference, right, that this was the motivation. So what is that person likely to feel towards Speaker Pelosi? Warmly or not so warmly? Not so, not so long. And who might benefit from Speaker Pelosi's keeping Senator Sanders in the Senate two weeks before a primary, three weeks before the second primary, I think four weeks before Super Tuesday? What other candidate might benefit from that? Joe Biden. Senator, well, all right, right, ex Vice President Biden. Does everybody agree? And being able to be physically present in these two very much hands-on states, ex-Vice President Biden, would you rather be in the Vice President's shoe or Senator Sanders' shoes for the next three weeks? Vice Talk President. to them. Right. Vice but think about But this is all speculation, right? Driven by motivation. What did you want to come? Now, take that the next step. If Senator, if, if, if uh, well, Senator, right? But if Joe Biden wins New Hampshire, wins Iowa, and goes on to get the nomination, what do you think the people who've made this inference may do on election day? Stay home. Stay home. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? So, it's, I love this stuff. If you flip that, right? <laughs> if, you, if you flip it, and you take the viewpoint of someone who is gonna support Joe Biden. Is Joe Biden gonna draw the same inference? No. No. Isn't, isn't Joe Biden likely to infer that the speaker's delay was attributed to some other cause? Yes. And then you can search around for the cause, right? A possible cause is could the speaker be, could she be complete and accurate when she says to us the purpose of the delay was to allow more time to pass and for more information to surface? Could that be the case? Yes. yes. It could, all we're saying is all could be means it's possible. Not, not that it's probable, not that it's improbable. It's possible. You want to be lawyers, right? I mean, it's the stuff you can't make this stuff up, right? So folks who are, it is certainly possible that someone who was supporting Biden has inferred the speaker's motives were benign. It wasn't to keep or to penalize Senator Sanders, <coughs> as well as, of course, uh, Senator Warren, as well as, of course, to penalize Senator Klobuchar uh, uh, and Senator Bennett, although I don't think Senator Bennett has much chance here. Um, 
do you get four of the candidates are now on the bench at the most at what arguably is the most important time of the year it's a beautiful thing and so if you're a Joe Biden you've drawn a complete you know if you're a supporter would it be fair to say you may have drawn a completely different inference about the speaker's motivation yes And how do you think supporters of Joe Biden are going to respond if maybe Bernie wins Iowa or Bernie wins New Hampshire and the Bernie supporters are on fire now and they're all saying, see, even when the fix was in, we won. Uh, how would that make you feel if you were a supporter of Joe Biden? Well, you, well, well, you might support Biden, but who, who might you be less likely to vote for? If the Sanders supporters, is, right, you get, it's a beautiful thing. For, from what we don't know, but will be inferred, and more often than not inferred on based on what you want to believe. Now, now Trump's just going to have a field out of this, mm -hmm. right? Because Trump's Trump's just going to wait till whoever gets the nomination and then draw the inferences, right? You know, and and, and, it'll, and he may be right. Uh, but again, do you get how when you abandon this process and it, it, it is not clinical anymore, right? I mean, vote for who you want to vote for, root for who you, for heaven's sakes, yes, of course, but reason as a lawyer. If your first inference that you made that isn't yours, but your, which is that Senator Bernie is going to be on the bench tied up and if the supporters are angry about it, that's a fair it could, isn't it? it could it could also end up benefiting Trump and backfire on Pelosi if that was the intent. Well, yeah. Well, right, right. And I'm taking more implicit. You know, my position is uh, if <coughs> the first thing it would do is make a uh, Biden supporter less likely to support. I'm sorry, to make a uh, Sanders supporter less likely to support Biden. The inference that follows from that is it's more likely Trump gets reelected, and that's not the intent back here. It is yes. not the intent of a Sanders supporter to reelect Trump. Right. And yet, it may well be the outcome. It's a beautiful thing, and again, it works if 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 if, if the Biden folks win that, but but they you know but but feel marginalized by the way the. I'm sorry, if Sanders wins, right? But Biden folks feel assaulted during this process because it, that's not the motivation they're attributing. It's just going to work in reverse. And folks right. who support Biden are not going to want to support Sanders, which is going to help who? Trump. Trump. That happened last time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely happened last time. Well, well, actually, let me not say it that way. It, I was, infer, different. it was different. I, I infer that the Sanders Clinton fallout, right, led to diminished Sanders support for Clinton in the general election. I may be wrong, but I'm sure of that. Whether I'm right or wrong about that, you know, this is the, be conscious of how you feel, right? Be conscious of what you want, don't apologize for that. But be conscious of how you reason. And, and the paths will, will definitely do it. Because you get the advantage you have. When people aren't aware of how they reason, you just have an enormous advantage. Yes. Yeah, because they don't, they don't know what they don't know. They don't realize they're going this way, right? And, and you just, you, you have, they don't have a chance. They don't have a chance. Um, you know, and if you think about the LSAT essay, this is what the LSAT essay to do it. Yeah, the LSAT, I mean, do you get, when I talk about a fact that's established, do you get that a fact that's established can be used in the primary argument of both the plaintiff and the defendant? Yes. You with me? Mm -hmm. That you simply spin a fact. A fact is, yeah, okay, we all agree that it existed, but but the thing about being law, but being in law, is is facts are not the facts themselves are not malleable. They happen, but their application to what you're describing is malleable. And so, a fact <coughs> can be used both <coughs> to support one side and support an opposing side. It's, it's really an interesting. So in any event, 
as we take the two logical reasoning sections today, this really is what it's all about. If you can do this in your regular life, right, you're going to do well in the OSEP. It's got nothing to do with school. You know, other than a high GPA, maybe you have a, a, more, a more robust vocabulary. Yeah, okay, that's going to help for sure, right? Um, uh, maybe you've been challenged in school to read more challenge. You know, maybe maybe the material you've read in school is really challenging as opposed to not so much. And yeah, that'll but nothing's going to change until you get this. So it just struck me on the way here that it's just 